everyone, welcome back to lesson five of actual English. My name is Jennifer Clyde. Well, time flies by very quickly, but of course, hold your worries, we do have many, many more topics to come. Now, today we'll be focusing on family. So, when it comes to family, what are some things you can talk about? Of course, you can mention things about your family members,、uh, what they do for a living, for example, where they live, and、uh, how closely you are connected. Perhaps how close you are with your immediate family members, meaning、uh, your siblings, your mom and dad, for example, or even your extended family, meaning your relatives such as your aunts and uncles, even nieces and nephews, and so on. Now, today we'll have the opportunity to listen to Peter and Rachel's story, what their family are like, and also Peter, another Peter, he's going to tell us about his story on actual,、uh, actual story as well. So, let's now get straight to our first segment of today's lesson. It's time for Actual Talk. Rachel. How was your trip to the States? Oh, it was amazing. What、I、did got, you do? I got to see and spend time with my family.、Oh. You know, I'm really close to my immediate family and my extended family. So,、oh, both of them? Yeah,、wow. they all live over in the States. So, it was just a great time to have a family reunion and to get together. You must miss them living so far away from them. I do. I miss them a lot. And after this recent trip, I realized the value of family even more. It was bittersweet、um, <laughs> just saying farewell to them. When I was coming back、Aww. here to Korea. Oh, that sounds sad. Yeah, I'm really close to my sister. She's、uh-huh. like my best friend. So、sure. at the time, it was really great to see her. And at the same time, it was so sad to know that I was going to leave her again. Yeah, that is bittersweet. It's the same for me because my family, my immediate family,、yes. my mother and father,、uh, they live in London, which is miles away. And we're really, really close knit as well, like a typical. I guess my mum is a typical Korean mum. <laughs> like, she really takes care of her only son. Yeah. Because she's in London, it's very, really difficult. I bet. So,、uh, I do miss them. Yeah. And you know, now that you have a family of your own, you have a son、yeah. uh, and your wife, <laughs> you know, does things on family kind of change for you? Like, perspective on family? Yeah, it's really strange because、yeah. now I have my own little family. Right, exactly. And then above me is my mum and dad. So, I'm a bit confused because I only had my baby recently. <laughs> Right. Um, but I think it turns into like just a bigger network, and there's just more family love, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And it gets even more close knit because then your parents, they want to see you more often to see their grandchild and things like that. That's true. And it's important for your grandchildren to have good relationships with their grandparents. Absolutely.、It's、connecting those generations. Yeah. You know what、yeah. they say blood is thicker than water. It is. It is. Like literally. It really is. <laughs> yeah. So never forget about your family. Yeah. Don't take them for granted. I agree. <laughs> All right, welcome back, everyone. Now, we all had a chance to listen to today's actual talk, a conversation between Rachel and Peter, as always. And it was our chance to find out a little bit more about these two. Now, Rachel, it sounds like she has just returned to Korea from a brief visit to the States.、Uh, there was a family reunion, so she had the chance to get together with her family members. And her sister as well. They're very, very close. They're like best friends, right? And what about Peter? He did mention that he is married and he now has a baby. So he has his own little family as well. And he did mention some things about his mom and dad back in London. So let's check it out line by line together. Here's today's actual talk. Now, Peter begins by saying, Rachel, how was your trip to the States? States, meaning the United States, America. You all know that, right? Okay, she says it was amazing. Sounds like she had a wonderful time. She says, I got to, meaning I had the chance to see and spend time with my family. Now she says, I'm really close to my immediate family. And my extended family. Okay, so let's take a look at this sentence. Okay, first of all, she says she's very close to. Close to who? Immediate family and extended family. Let's take a look at what these actually mean. So, first of all, immediate family. Immediate means very close, right? So, perhaps if you want to talk about your mom and dad, your brother or brothers and sisters, you can refer to them as your immediate family. 
the very closest family members. And then, of course, our relatives are close family members, but you can refer to them as extended family members. Uh, cousins, perhaps, they would be your extended family member. Or even your in-laws, if you're married, they are considered family, but not immediate. They would be called extended family members, all right? Okay, let's move on. All right, so Peter says both of them, meaning both your immediate and extended family. You're very close with both of them. And then Rachel says, yeah, they all live over in the States. Now, over in this case is added just to give you an idea that it's far away, okay? They all live in the States, so it was just great, okay, to have a family reunion and to get together. We all know what a family reunion is. A reunion is like a gathering, right? So often, you may have a reunion and get together with your uh, well, classmates from college, for example. That is a reunion, but you can also have a family reunion. It's when many of your family members get together. Kind of close to a kajo buim, right? Okay, but often you say family reunion when you have been apart, when you have not seen each other for a long time. But if you have been, you could just call it a family get together or a family, that's right, gathering. Okay, moving on. Now, Peter says, you must miss them. That's right, miss them because they live in the States, living so far away from them. Moving on, Rachel says, I do, meaning I do miss them so much. And after this recent trip, I realized, hmm, I realized what? The value of family. Now, what does the value mean? Value itself means perhaps the price of something, um, but in this case, we're not talking about the price, we're talking about the importance. So, once again, the value of family, you can say, in other words, the importance of family. So she's saying, I realized the value of family, meaning I really realized the importance of family. I realized how important family is, okay? Moving on, it was bittersweet saying farewell to them, mm, saying farewell meaning goodbye to them when I was coming back here to Korea. And of course, Peter says, oh, that sounds sad. Let's focus on bittersweet though, bittersweet. Bitter in Korean is 쓰다, 쓴, right? Sweet, 단, 달다. So if bitter and sweet are used together as one word, what does it mean? Let's check it out. Now, bittersweet itself means that something is bitter and sweet at the same time. So it means that something is pleasant, but also sad at the same time. We'll check out this uh, expression later on and practice using it in a sentence, so hold your worries, okay? All right, moving on to what else they say. Now, Rachel says, I'm really close to my sister, okay? Be close to someone. Have a very tight relationship with someone. I'm really close to my sister. She's like my best friend, so it was really great to see her. And at the same time, it was so sad to know that I was going to leave her again. So she's basically talking about that bittersweet moment. Why? As we can tell, it was great. She was happy to see her sister. But at the same time, 동시에, what did she say? It was so sad to know that I had to leave her again. So that was a bittersweet moment, okay? Now remember what bittersweet means. And then moving on, Peter says, that is bittersweet. He's stressing, yeah, that's sad, that is bittersweet. There's both good and bad, pleasant and unhappy. It's the same for me. So for him, it's the same, okay? It's the same for me because my immediate family, once again, immediate family, we're referring to mom, dad, brother, sister, my mother and father, what? They live in London, which is miles away. I guess in Korea, we, uh, instead of miles, we use kilometers more often. So maybe if you want to stress that somebody lives very far away, you can say, yes, which is kilometers away, which is far away, which is miles away. And he says, we're really close knit as well. Aha, here, we've got close knit as well, like a typical Korean mom. 
Let's take a look at close knit. Close means very close, near, right? But knit. Imagine um, a sweater, for example, right? You can knit a sweater, right? Or knit a scarf, for example. And usually the thread, right? Or the yarn, they're closely or tightly knit. Okay, it means very, very close. So close knit once again, it means very tight or very close, especially in a relationship. I can say, uh, my mom and I are very close knit. It means my mom and I are very, very close. We have a very strong, a close relationship, a good relationship. All right, and then he does mention a typical Korean mom. That is not a spelling mistake. It is M-U-M, -M, of course. Uh, of course, uh, his parents live in London. So that's just a British way of saying mom, of course, right? So mum, M-U-M, keep in mind that is correct. It's not a typo. So he says a typical mum meaning mom. Yeah, we're very, very tight. We're very, very close. Now London, it's really difficult for her. So I do miss them. They live far away, so I do miss them. All right, let's move on to what else they say. Now, Rachel says, now that you have a son and your wife, do things on family change for you? Now, now that meaning it's different from before. Perhaps maybe last year or a couple of years ago, he didn't have a baby. Maybe he wasn't married, but now, at this moment, now that you have a baby and a wife, are things different for you? She's asking, okay? And then Peter says, yeah, it's really strange. And then he gets to the details. He says, because now I have my own little family. That's right. Of course, his parents, his mom and dad are his family, but now he's talking about his own little family, meaning his wife and his baby. And then above me, above, up there, meaning, of course, his parents, is my mom and dad. So I'm a bit confused because I only had my baby recently, but I think it turns into a bigger network. Now, you may wonder, why is network used in that sense? Network, we're not talking about radio stations or TV stations or computer networks. We're talking about perhaps a group in this case. So a network meaning a bigger network of family a bigger family, okay? And he says they're just more family to love, okay? He's just giving details, so uh, you don't need, necessarily have to pay too much attention to this part. Moving on, Rachel says, and it's important for your grandchildren to have good relationships, so you often have a good relationship or good relationships with someone, okay? To have a good relationship with someone. It's connecting those generations. And she says, you know what they say? Blood is thicker than water. Okay. There is a very similar expression in Korean. Piga mm. 물보다 진하다. Exactly it. So if you want to say that in English, just remember, blood is thicker, right? It's thicker than water. Blood is thicker than water, okay? So here we take a look at blood is thicker than water. Now, people who are related that have a very strong connection or a bond. So sometimes we say blood is thicker than water. Yeah, turn to your family mm, and not your friends. So keep that in mind, blood is thicker than water. And then Peter says literally. Now, what does literally mean? Literally, it just means word for word. So when you say literally, that's right, literally, you're saying actually, or yes, that's right, word for word, exactly, okay? So he's saying, yeah, blood is thicker than water, it's true, word for word, that's true. So never forget about your family and don't take them for granted. Okay, take somebody or something for granted. What does that mean? Uh, for example, if you think that a remote control is always there for you and it will be there for you, then you will take it for granted. You won't think that a remote control is very special. But if you say, don't take somebody or something for granted, it just means. Now realize the importance of it, okay? Always treasure it or treasure that person. So it's just saying, yeah, family is very important. Don't take them for granted, appreciate them. 
Okay, that is the end of today's actual talk, everyone. Let's take a listen to it one more time. Rachel, how was your trip to the States? Oh, it was amazing. What I got, did you do? I got to see and spend time with my family. Oh. You know, I'm really close to my immediate family and my extended family. So oh, Both of them? Yeah, wow. they all live over in the States. So it was just a great time to have a family reunion and to get together. You must miss them living so far away from them. I do. I miss them a lot. And after this recent trip, I realized the value of family even more. It was bittersweet um, <laughs> just saying farewell to them when I was coming back Aww. here to Korea. Oh, that sounds sad. Yeah, I'm really close with my sister. She's uh -huh. like my best friend. So sure. at the time, it was really great to see her. And at the same time, it was so sad to know that I was going to leave her again. Yeah, that is bittersweet. It's the same for me because my family, my immediate family, my yes. mother and father, uh, they live in London, which is miles away, and re really close-knit as well, like a typical, I guess my mum is a typical Korean mum, <laughs> like she really takes care of her only son, Yeah, because she's in London, it's very, really difficult, I bet. so uh, I do miss them. Yeah, and you know, now that you have a family of your own, you have a son yeah. uh, and your wife, <laughs> you know... Does things on family kind of change for you, like perspective on family? Yeah, it's really strange because yeah. now I have my own little family. Right, exactly. And then above me is my mum and dad. So I'm a bit confused because I only had my baby recently. <laughs> right. Um, but I think it turns into like just a bigger network and there's just more family love, I guess. Yeah. There. yeah. And it gets even more close knit because then your parents, they want to see you more often to see their grandchild and things like that. That's true. And it's important for your grandchildren to have good relationships with their grandparents. Absolutely. It's connecting those generations. Yeah. You know what yeah. they say, blood is thicker than water. It is. It is. Like literally. It really is. <laughs> yes. So never forget about your family. Yeah. Don't take them for granted. I agree. <laughs> Now it's time for me to introduce some wonderful expressions that you can use the next time you talk about your family. Let's take a look. Remember, bittersweet? Now it is one word, so it means that something is at the same time very pleasant, but also very painful, or even regretful, okay? So in a sentence you can say, he and I have been friends since elementary school. Hmm. So, they're probably very close. So, you can say, we have lots of bittersweet memories. So, bittersweet memories, once again, are good and bad memories, okay? They're very special. Special memories, but they're good and bad memories. Bittersweet memories. Uh, yes, this one. Trips to the cemetery. Often, we may go to the graveside or the cemetery to pay our grandparents um, you know, a visit or whoever it is. It can be a friend, it can be a family member, but trips to the cemetery can be bittersweet at times. It's true. Now, bittersweet, you go to the cemetery, so you miss that person very much and you're happy to be there for that person, although he or she is deceased, but it's quite painful at the same time. So, trips to the cemetery can be bittersweet sometimes. Let's move on and check out close-knit. Remember, close-knit is, that's right, very, very tight, very close. Especially when you're talking about a relationship, you can say, we're very close, we are very close-knit. Here's a sentence. My neighbors are a large and extremely close-knit family. So you're talking about your neighbors, but they're large and extremely close-knit meaning they are very, very tight, okay? Each and every family member are very close to each other, close with each other. Let's check out one more, slightly different. My sister and I are really closely knit. You can also uh, use it in that form. My sister and I are very tight. My sister and I are really closely knit. Okay, let's check out one more. Blood is thicker than water, I know you know the meaning of this. Let's just practice using it in different situations. You can say, my friends invited me to go to the beach on Sunday, okay? But I'm going to my cousin's wedding. Why? After all, blood is thicker than water. That's right. So this sentence, it just means your friends invited you to go have fun with them. Although you want to go, 
you will go to your cousin's wedding because it is much more important. It's family. Blood is thicker than water. Here's another related vocabulary. Blood runs thicker than water. Okay, let's try making a sentence using this. Blood runs thicker than water. My mom always says, if you ever need help, turn to your family. Why? Blood runs thicker than water. This is what my mom always tells me, actually. She says, Jen, if you ever have trouble, if you ever have uh, hardships, if you ever need help, don't turn to your friends. Turn to your family. Family is very important and blood runs thicker than water. And I think that's true as well. So everyone, let's not take our family for granted. They are very, very special to us. Yes, let's all learn to value our family. That about does it for today's actual talk, everyone. Let's now move on. I love to talk about my family. Uh, I have a great extended family with aunts and uncles and cousins spread out all over the world. My mom is the oldest of eight, so she, she had lots of brothers and sisters and uh, all that family. We try to get together once in a while um, and uh, keep in touch over Skype or some other internet means. Um, but the real joy of my life is my immediate family with my twin boys and my beautiful wife. Um, so I do everything I can to get out of work quick and go spend time with them um, and just enjoy uh, family life. In today's actual story, Peter told us all about his family and how close he is with his family. He's mentioned something about his parents, his mother, of course, and his aunts and uncles and cousins that live in Minneapolis or in the States, all over the world, actually, or all over the States. And he's also mentioned something about his immediate family, very immediate, I guess, his wife and his two little sons. Now, he seems to value his family very much, so let's check out what he said. Here we go. He says, I have a great extended family with aunts and uncles and cousins. And then he goes on. Now here, in this case, great. It could mean wonderful, good, super, but it can also mean that it is huge. He's got a huge extended family with so-and-so, with aunts and uncles and cousins. And he says, my mom is the oldest of eight. Okay, meaning she is the oldest sibling of eight siblings and she has lots of brothers and sisters. Now he says we try to get together once in a while and keep in touch over Skype, okay, or some other internet means. So we're going to take a look at some patterns here. First of all, let's check this one out. I have a big or a small extended family with, and then you could add aunts, uncles, cousins, nieces, nephews, and so on, okay? So here, first of all, I have a huge, meaning a very big, you can also say great, I have a huge extended family with seven aunts and uncles, and then add some detail, and over 20 cousins, all right? So the whole point is, say you have a big or small extended family and who it consists of. In this case, seven aunts and uncles and many, many cousins, over 20 cousins. One more, I have a small extended family with two aunts and three cousins, okay? And pay attention to this, on my mom's side, okay? I think even in Korean we say 엄마 쪽, 아빠 쪽. Right, 친가, 외가. But in this case, if you want to say 친가, 외가, 엄마 쪽, 아빠 쪽, you can say on my dad's side or on my mom's side. That's how you would say it in English, okay? So please do keep these patterns in mind. And then let's check out this one. Somebody is the oldest or youngest of and then number of siblings. Siblings is just another word for brothers and sisters, okay? So, for example, you can say, I am the youngest of three. Meaning, including you, there are 
three uh, brothers and sisters. What about this? My father is the oldest of six, meaning you have five uncles or aunts, and then there's your father as well. All right. So that about does it for today's actual story and the expressions you can practice and make your own, everyone. All right. That is a wrap. I love to talk about my family. Uh, I have a great extended family with aunts and uncles and cousins spread out all over the world. My mom is the oldest of eight, so she, she had lots of brothers and sisters and uh, all that family. We try to get together once in a while um, and uh, keep in touch over Skype or some other internet means. Um, but the real joy of my life is my immediate family with my twin boys and my beautiful wife. Um, so I do everything I can to get out of work quick and go spend time with them um, and just enjoy uh, family life. Okay everyone, it is time for us to say goodbye but quickly as we're at it, let me tell you a bit about my family using the expressions we learned today. For example, I would say, I am the youngest of two siblings. Hmm. I'm very close with my mother. We're closely knit, or my mom and I are close knit. I do have a fairly large extended family. Uh, my mother is the oldest of five, and I have about eight cousins. It's not too many, but that's average, right? Okay, it's easy, everyone. Don't stress yourself out. Just keep certain expressions, phrases, and vocabulary words in mind, and also make use of the idioms I introduce you, uh, I introduce to you during our lessons. And make up your own stories, make them fun, add some details as always. Okay, next time I'll be joining you with a new group of topics. We'll talk about perhaps the time that you spent as a little girl or a boy, and then we'll reach up to the point uh, and talk about perhaps in way future when you retire, okay? So that is to come next time. In the meantime, come to our homepage, visit us at www.ebse.co.kr and leave us some messages, questions, and feedback. All right, have a wonderful day. I'll catch you again next time. Bye, everyone.